Welcome back everyone to the Visit Down with Michael Tama, and we'll talk about risk management. We want to do a kind of a course on that topic because we get a lot of questions about risk management. And what you see on YouTube is very a small part of what risk management is really about in trading. So Michael is the best one to talk about this topic, wrote a whole book about it. So Michael, welcome back and good to have you here, of course. Uh, let's dive into risk management and the details of it, how to make it work for traders. Yeah, great to be back, Etienne. Uh, thanks. Uh, let's, uh, my favorite topic. Let's, uh, let's get right to it. The first thing we want to talk about, let's get right into the, the, the core concept of how to optimize this thing that we all call risk management and we struggle with is, let's change the narrative first of all, okay? We all focus on individual trade risk. You know, where's going to put my risk and my risk management's in place. And maybe your trading plan says, you know, risk management, you know, and two to one risk reward. Let's change the narrative, okay? From now on, we want to talk more about your series of trades. Too much focus on individual trade risk that I see when I coach, when I talk to traders, and even do journal audits. Let's sort of change the narrative and change the scope of how we see risk management. Yeah, and what I'm saying basically at the end is, you know, let's start focusing on batching trades, all right? Take 20 or 30 trades, or if you're a scalper or you're a frequent trader, 100, 150. Then do your assessment. You know, really, if you have a bad trade, or even if you just made a, a terrible error, we all do. I mean, I'm 20 plus years in the business. I'm still doing making mistakes. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to kill your business as a trader. All right, learn from it by all means. Journal it, make comments, but let's start assessing our risk and our performance based on a series, or as I call them, batch trades. Very, very different approach that we see sort of in the common framework and sector in risk management. Yeah, and lastly, really minimize, and this is you know maybe controversial, okay? I'm gonna probably get a lot of ad comments, all right? But here's the risk manager talking. Let's minimize the importance of win loss. So, okay, hold on a second. Are you serious? Isn't that your first column in your journal? You know, did I win or did I lose? Does it really have a true importance on an individual level? Maybe you do want to, you know, still record it, okay? I'm making a commitment, by the way. I'm sort of announcing. I'm making a commitment next year. I'm not going to be recording my win loss anymore. It just doesn't have a big impact, all right? There are other metrics that we'll talk about that have a much bigger impact, not just on risk management, but on your success as a trader. So if you want to individualize, put your win loss, but really what is it telling you on an individual trade? Very little. It's not really that important. So minimize the importance of it. We see too many traders driving their decisions based on win loss or, hey, I went two wins and one loss today or, you know, I was down all week, and then Friday I had three wins, so I, you know, I ended up positive. Who cares? All right? What does that have to do with the enterprise risk element of your business? Okay, and last. So if we're not going to really focus too much on win-loss, all right, what should we be focusing on? How about focusing on the execution? Did you execute your plan, and I call it with compliance? Did you execute it as your plan stated you should have done it? All right? I call it risk of ruin. What's the impact? This is really the risk management element that I want, really want people to start to focus more on. All right? Like I said, that little bad trade that you had on Tuesday morning. Who cares? Did it affect your life as a trader? If you learn from it, you actually it's a win in a sense. So let's start focusing on execution, perfection of execution, trade management, and exit. That's really what our job is as traders. And ultimately, in risk management, we want to focus on that risk of ruin. What am I doing every day? And is it impacting the risk or the exposure that I'm eventually you know, going to blow up or really just not be successful in this? Let's start shifting the focus and risk management to that. So one of the big things I learned from you is how to identify risks. Because risk isn't just about like, oh, you risk low in your trades, you have a low risk per trade. It's more about like, how do you identify risks that, or things that could affect your overall results? So tell me more about kind of how you look at these risks and how what you do to take care of these risks that you see with trading. Yeah, and we'll go back to sort of corporate risk management or the sort of tenets of the framework of risk management by itself, not just in trading, but in the corporate world and anything else. There's three key steps in the beginning that is really, really important. And the first one is risk identification. Basically, the thinking is, is you can't assess something, which is the second phase, and really control the issue if you don't identify it. Right? So if you don't identify it, you can't do anything else. So the most important and key step in the risk management process in for traders is to identify what's going on. You may not have a solution, but if you identify it, okay, now you're going to put it on the map and you're going to work your way. And really the key to doing that is through using your platform, 
to identify things and your tools and your, your summary metrics. But really, journaling, yeah, I know we're being repetitive here, but journaling is so important to identify the areas of focus. They identify the areas that maybe need some improvement in, and you go to the next step. All right, and how do we do that? Well, again, good, solid journaling is really important. You guys really see some good tools out there on the journaling side. I'm still an old schooler. I know I'm a boomer. I'm using spreadsheets and stuff, but it works for me. It helps me identify. That's the most important part of really backtesting and journalizing, journaling to, to identify your issues. Using optimization tools, whether it's backtesting, forward testing, that really should play a role. It's not about seeing how much could I make on the strategy. That's part of it. But, and it maybe gives you some confidence. But really what I want you to do in that backtesting process, and even forward testing, is to use those tools and journal the summary results. Remember, not the individual trade risk. Summarize. Use those summary tools, information that those, the platform provides you, and really get to the nitty-gritty. And what's the goal? Identification. I mean, I'm using FT6. I mean, I'm really enjoying this feature. I'm really excited about how just, you know, far exception in general, but really the industry as a whole has really made a lot of progress. And it's not just about back testing to see if my strategy works. Now we're using it as a risk management tool to say, hmm, is this going to meet my risk parameters as a trader? Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, you know, we've talked a lot about Fox SR6 in the past, and I've done videos on it also where I kind of go through it, show you the feature, what you can do with it. It's a, definitely a good software for that. Uh, we'll leave the link in the corner over here. You can check it out directly if you want. Michael will give you some more tips on how to manage risk better, but that would be a good video to watch next after you watch this one to kind of learn more about how you can use back testing, forward testing, uh, getting all these metrics to make your trading better and more risk efficient. Yeah, thanks. I blame you, Etienne. You got me hooked on uh, this software, so um, it's all your fault. No, let's, uh, let's continue on it. All right, so, and really the idea is once we do our risk identification, we journal, we do our back testing, forward testing, I love to, all right, really implement the controls. So remember ident uh, the risk management process, identification, all right, we talked about that. We're gonna assess the impact of that, okay, and say, hey, which are the ones I wanna really attack because it's really affecting my ability to be successful or meet my trading goals. And then we're gonna implement the controls, right, based on the information that tells you, say, okay, this is not working when I do this, or when I put a, use certain sizing, it's too much for the volatility, whatever the case might be. My optimization and testing tools told me that, so now I'm gonna implement these controls. And I'll use the term Jared Tendler uses a lot in his psychology, suck less, all right? We're not here to hit home runs. The successful traders who make that transition, it's really all about sucking less, all right? Making less errors the next time around. And that's really how you turn the corner. It's not about more trades. It's not about bigger size. It's just about taking those errors and minimizing them the next way through. And what do we do? We optimize and back test again to validate that. That's really the whole risk management process in general. Maybe you go a slide for a second here and can you give me some, some examples of risks, issues that our students are dealing with? What are some common things that people face that either they want to get funded, either they want to get just profitable? What are some of these risks that they face the most in their trading? Yeah, I think, I mean, size is always the nemesis. I mean, it's the risk manager's nightmare when I look at certain things and I, I can look at all the tests, the compliance issue that we talked about may be pretty good or they're getting better, but boy, size kills. I mean, Think about if you trade a very small size, I mean, the risk of ruin, which is basically your ability to either blow up or just not be successful, it just goes up so exponentially when you add size. And I know we're here you know, to increase that P&L and to, to live a lifestyle, but it starts small, make the mistakes, make a less, you know, the suck less thing. And that. so sizing is, is a really, really important one. The other one I would say too, and this is really where like using software helps a lot too, is look at your strategy tools that you're using, your indicators, your triggers, how are they working for you? You know, sometimes I think traders get caught up in this, this mission where like, well, everybody's using it, so it must be well. And, you know, people on, on YouTube are saying it's great. And, you know, ICT said it's good. And so, I mean, test it. Do your own thing. Are you comfortable with it? So the big difference I see is maybe there's something that has some validity, but maybe it's just not right for you, or maybe it's not right for your lifestyle. So take a look at those filters those tools that you're using and say, hmm, are these working for me? Have I optimized them? And again, of course, use you know tools to help you identify that. All right, let's summarize. What can we take away from this? How can we use this to become better traders? And what's in it for people to use? 
Okay, well, let's start with something. I mean, here come the comments, but I really want to make a point clear. Is one of the most popular questions I get is, what's your risk reward on this strategy? Or Mike, do you do one to one risk reward or two to one? Or do you trail or do you not? Risk reward, all right? There's a math behind it. There's a math component behind it. It's all linear, okay? So the answer is, it really doesn't matter over a series of trades per se. It may have to meet your risk profile and your risk tolerance, and certainly with confidence. So I don't want to get someone with a 10 to one risk reward who has a you know, 10% success rate on trades. It's great for profitability, but it may be one not good for someone who's you know, kind of building their confidence level. So, but risk reward, it's, let's downsize the meaning of it, right? Right along with individual trades. Again, this is the risk manager talking. It's really linear. It's not as important as people think, as long as you're consistent. And quite honestly, the compliance metric that we talked about earlier, much more important. If you're compliant in executing your plan as it's designed to do, and your back test shows that it has been successful in different markets, probably be a good chance that if you execute it profit, profitably or you know, with consistency, you will be profitable. So risk reward is linear. Any risk reward framework can be successful, again, as long as you have a positive edge strategy. And how do we do that? We back test, we forward test. And again, just to summarize this up, and, and when we talk about risk management and stuff, that you know, we talked about the math behind it too. It's really just math, okay? I mean, even trading in itself is just math. I mean, I always kid around like this. You know, if there were two turtles crossing the road and one has a 70% success history on the right, I'm taking the one on the right, all right? It's just trading facilitates the math and risk management supports it. So have a good strategy, have a one with edge that you can execute properly, right? Back test to validate the strategy itself. Then there's a question of, can you execute it properly? All right, so there's maybe a little gap there. That's we identify those things. But remember, math drives these decisions, these risk management decisions, all right? It's not about, I think the market's going up. You know, Powell's going to say something stupid tomorrow. I'm going short. No, use the math to drive your decisions. That's really the keys to solid risk management, not just in trading, in the corporate sector, and things like that in the financial services area, we're using the same equation in risk management, but it really, really shines if you use it properly in trading. And again, lastly, size kills. Okay, I mean, when you're learning, especially if the traders you know who come on board this year and they're just kind of developing their skill set, back test, optimize, trade and demo. I'm not a big fan of demo, but you know what? It's the best thing we have. Get yourself away from risk of ruin. Right, size kills. Get permission, whether it's yourself, your spouse, your coach, your trading partner, get permission to scale up. And that means you have shown and proven to yourself that you can execute with compliance on a positive expectancy strategy and use the proper risk tools, identification, assessment control that allows you to scale up. This is a job. Think about your applying for a raise. All right. And then when you meet those requirements, you will get it. And trust me, there are plenty of raises out there. It's unlimited, but you have to do the work and you have to do it properly and really use backup support tools to really validate that. Like for example, if I'm in a, like a fun type situation and someone wants to show me about they want to get more size, allow more size for their trading. Well, show it to me. Don't show me a spreadsheet. Show me something, a tool, a summary thing that I can validate that will allow me to do it. So if you're not trading for a prop firm or anything like that, you're just trading for yourself, but kind of put yourself in a situation where you have to earn that right. And again, once you get there, it's just rinse, wash, repeat. Don't try and reinvent the wheel, all right? Use the tools to help you and just keep doing what you're doing. Consistency is so key. It's in, we talked about equity curve, like in several times in our discussion. That's the resume for this job. Show me a solid equity curve with legitimate drawdowns, all right? That ones that you're able to hold and be consistent with get you everywhere. But you got to do that by keeping size small and being consistent. Obviously, risk management is not the most sexy topic that there is out there. There's a lot of stuff that people care about more, like strategies, like setups, like entries and exits. Uh, but we want to get your thoughts on this. We want to get your comments that you can leave below if you have any questions or comments. Feel free to post them below. And we'll get back to those. We'll kind of maybe do more videos on this topic if you want to. There's a lot you can do with risk management. We've done videos in the past. Uh, here on the right, you'll, you'll see the video to watch next. Michael, any last kind of words for people to leave with? Yeah, just embrace 
the idea it's first of all you're it's required it's a job requirement in this profession so embrace it but look at the different ways we're looking at it you know i'm not looking at digital trade risk and risk reward kind of embrace it and it's a good time of year to be honest with you start thinking about this because you know we start turning the corner it's uh, the next new year uh, now's the time you can start implementing some of these you know little shifts to this topic that we uh we all embrace and love even though it may not be the most sexy in the world we need to address it so come with those two questions michael and i will get back to them maybe do more views on that topic we're working on this capping course part two coming up pretty soon uh, also if you want to get fox sister six currently it's version six available check out the link below this is the software i recommend everyone for backtesting going back on the data building some stats building some experience there's a lot you can do with it it's very powerful and here's a video to watch next on the right click on this one to watch it next and we'll catch you back here in the next video pretty soon. Ciao.